on the my bill any time someone inherits an estate in america of three point five million or less that person will not pay one penny in taxes in estate taxes they will get to keep that inheritance tax free and that population includes ninety nine point eight percent of the american people so the legislation i am proposing would not raise taxes by a penny on ninety nine point eight percent of the american population but if you are in the top two tenths of one percent of the population that population that inherits over three point five million dollars your taxes will in fact be going up and they should be going up my legislation establishes a forty five percent tax on the value of an estate between three point five million and ten million a fifty percent tax on the value of an estate between ten million and fifty million a fifty five percent tax on the value of an estate in excess of fifty million and a seventy seven percent tax on the value of an estate above one billion dollars above one billion dollars when can early voting take place and how long and where should the Mr. President, in a quorum call. Ask that the uh, quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. Mr. President, uh, all across our country, in Vermont, in Illinois, and in California, all across this country, people are asking a very simple question. And that question is how does it happen? that in the midst of the extraordinary wealth that exists in our country, how does it happen that so many people continue to hurt financially and struggle desperately to keep their heads above water economically? Today, despite unemployment being relatively low, some 40 million Americans continue to live in poverty. Now, we don't talk about poverty very much here in the Senate, but we have 40 million Americans living in poverty, and many of them are struggling to adequately feed their kids. Many of them are forced to go, despite working, to emergency food shelves just to stay alive. And Despite the United States having a GDP, gross domestic product, of more than $20 trillion, we in this country embarrassingly continue to have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on Earth. We don't talk about that either, but the children are obviously the future of America. And we continue to have one of the highest rates of childhood poverty of any major country, and that includes 29% of African American children who live in poverty. Mr. President, how does it happen that in a so called booming economy, and we hear from President Trump every other day about how the economy is booming, the bottom 40% of our population? does not have $400 in cash in order to address a financial emergency. Think about that. Bottom 40%, almost half of Americans, don't have $400 in their pocket in the bank to address a financial emergency like maybe the car breaks down, maybe the kid gets sick, maybe one loses one's job, maybe one undergoes a divorce, something happens. 40% of the American people don't have $400 in the bank to address that crisis. In other words, today, and we saw this in the recent government shutdown, today in America you have many, many millions of families who live paycheck to paycheck in order to survive. 
And that should not be happening in the wealthiest country on Earth. And it's time we began to talk about that. It's not good enough to talking about a so-called booming economy and forgetting about tens of millions of families who are not seeing that booming economy, but in fact are living under incredible financial stress. Mr. President, how does it happen that in the so-called booming economy, tens of millions of American workers today are working for wages that are so low they cannot afford the escalating cost of housing? Some of them are spending 40, 50 percent of their limited incomes are housing. And for many of these people, there is no health insurance available. The idea of a vacation for the family is something not even to be thought about. And the idea of being able to send one's kids to college is something that is also not on the table. And by the way, many of these individuals are working two or three jobs, 50, 60, 70 hours a week just to survive. Mr. President, this again is the wealthiest country in the history of the world. Yet 30 million Americans today, as we speak, have zero health insurance, no health insurance at all. 41 million people are underinsured, which means their deductibles and their co-payments are so high that even though they have insurance, they still can't afford to go to the doctor. And one out of five Americans today cannot afford the prescription drugs their doctors prescribe. In my view, it's a view I've held for a very, very long time, and it's a view shared by people not only in this country in wide numbers, but all over the world. Health care is a human right, not a privilege. And whether you are rich or whether you are poor, you have the right to go to a doctor when you get sick, and you have the right to know that if you end up in a hospital, you are not going to go bankrupt or suffer from financial distress. Mr. President, we are an aging population. No great secret there. We are an aging population. And in this Congress, instead of dealing with government shutdowns precipitated by the President, we should be talking about how we respond to the reality of an aging population. And yet, what we don't talk about is that about half of older Americans, half of older Americans, those 55 and older, have no retirement savings and no idea about how they will retire with dignity. Now think about what that means. Somebody is 60 years of age, they're coming to the end of their work life, and they have no money or virtually no money in their bank. Maybe all they're going to get is Social Security, and they turn on the TV, they find folks around here talking about even cutting Social Security. And you talk about why people in this country are angry and why they are stressed out. So here is the, the bottom line, Mr. President. We are the wealthiest country on Earth. In fact, we are the wealthiest country in the history of the world. But despite that wealth, a significant percentage of our population, our children, our elderly people, our working men and women, struggle each and every day to keep their heads above water economically. And not only are they struggling, I think the pain that they are feeling has to do with the worry they have about the future for their kids. Because they know, as many of us know, that unless we make some bold changes in our economy, the younger generation today will have a lower standard of living 
than their parents. Imagine that. Booming, so-called booming economy, and yet we're looking at a situation where the younger generation may well have a lower standard of living than their parents. But I want to also say a word about another reality that currently exists. And that is that while so many of our people are struggling, while so many of our children are living in poverty, while 20% of folks on Social Security are trying to live on less than $13,000 a year, there is another pervasive reality in American society today, and that is the people on top, the very wealthiest people in this country, have never had it better, and the gap between the very, very rich, I'm not just talking about the rich, I'm talking about the very, very rich, is growing wider. Here is the simple truth, a truth that we virtually never talk about here in the Senate, a truth that is not heard much in the corporate media. And that is that the United States of America today has the most unequal distribution of wealth and income of almost any major country on Earth. And that level of inequality is worse today than at any time since the 1920s, the so-called gilded age of American society. Today, if you can believe it, the three wealthiest people in this country, three, own more wealth than the bottom half of America, 160 million people. Let me repeat that. The three wealthiest people in this country own more wealth than the bottom half of America, 160 million people. Today, the top one-tenth of one percent, not one percent, one-tenth of one percent, own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Today, and since the Wall Street crash in 2008, about 46% of all new income goes to the top 1%. Roughly speaking, half of all new income goes to the bottom 99%, and half goes to the top 1%. And our great task here in the United States Senate is to keep the government open while Trump tries to shut it down. Maybe, just maybe, we should be talking about those issues. Maybe, just maybe, we should be talking about an economy that works for all of us, not just the people on top. Mr. President, today, the top 25 hedge fund managers on Wall Street, 25 hedge fund managers, earn nearly double the income of all 140,000 kindergarten teachers in America. You know, Mr. President, what all of the psychologists tell us is that the most important years of a human being's development are zero to four. That is the most impressionable years in terms of how we develop intellectually and emotionally. And it is our childcare workers, our kindergarten teachers, who play a very important role in that. Does anybody think it makes sense that you got 25 hedge fund managers on Wall Street who today earn nearly double what 140,000 of our kindergarten teachers make? And by the way, public school teachers in America are falling further and further behind other occupations. Mr. President, having stated that reality, the fact that a middle class is struggling, the fact that the people on top are doing phenomenally well, I think it is fair to ask what the views are of the Republican leadership here in the Senate. Republicans control the Senate. And what our Republican president, President Trump, is proposing to address these massive levels 
of injustice and inequality. Three people own more wealth than the bottom half of America. What does the president, what does Leader McConnell have to say about that? And the sad truth is that the Republican leadership today wants to make an embarrassingly bad situation even worse. Mr. President, after passing a trillion dollar tax giveaway for the top 1% and large corporations last year, Republican leadership is coming back. They're saying, hey, we only gave 83% of the tax benefits to the 1%. That's not good enough. That is not good enough. We have got to do even better for our billionaire and corporate sponsors. And this time, the Republican leadership and the president want a tax break of hundreds of billions of dollars that would go exclusively to the wealthiest of the wealthy. I'm not talking about the wealthy. I am talking about the wealthiest of the wealthy, the top one-tenth of one percent, the wealthiest 1,700 families in America. Mr. President, we have 127 million families in our country, or a population of some 320 million people and 127 million families. And as I've indicated, many of these families are struggling, many of these families are hurting, many of these families today are wondering how they're going to pay their rent, pay their mortgages, keep their lights on. And yet the legislation to repeal the estate tax that Senator McConnell and President Trump are proposing would benefit less than the top one-tenth of one percent of them. 99.9 percent .9 would see no tax reduction from their legislation. Can anyone actually imagine bringing forward a piece of legislation that does not help the bottom 99.9 percent? .9 Can you imagine that? Middle class struggling, gap between the rich and the poor growing wider, 30 million people, no health insurance, our infrastructure crumbling, and they come forward with a piece of legislation that is designed to protect and benefit the top one-tenth of one percent. Legislation that would be of no benefit to 99.9 percent .9 of the people of this country. I think it is clear, Mr. President, that when the people of this country look at Congress, and they say, those folks there in Washington are not representing me. They're representing their wealthy campaign contributors. They're representing the billionaire class. There can be no clearer example of that reality than this proposed legislation. Once again, imagine with all of the economic problems, all of the inequality that we face, Legislation that comes forward from the Republican leadership and the president benefits the top one-tenth of one percent, the 1,700 wealthiest families in this country. Mr. President, it is no great secret that our infrastructure, our roads and our bridges, water systems, airports, wastewater plants, they're crumbling all over this country. In Vermont, all over this country, major infrastructural problems. But I hear over and over again, we don't have the funding to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure and put millions of Americans to work at good paying jobs rebuilding that infrastructure. We just don't have the money. Our school teachers are underpaid, but we don't have the money to provide attractive salaries in order to get the best and the brightest to do the most important work in this country, and that is teaching our young people. Today, we have veterans, people who put their lives on the line, sleeping out on the streets. We don't have the money to house them. Families in America cannot afford childcare. Public schools are underfunded. We don't have the money to address those crises. But somehow, we do have hundreds of billions of dollars available to provide tax breaks for the top one-tenth of one percent. 
We apparently have e enough money to provide the Walton family, the wealthiest family in America, folks who own Walmart, people who pay their own employees starvation wages. We have enough money available by repealing the state tax, as Senator McConnell and President Trump would like to do. We have enough money to provide the Walton family, the wealthiest family in America, with a tax break of up to $63 billion. Okay? Veterans sleep out on the street. Teachers are underpaid. 30 million Americans have no health insurance. Can't address those issues. But we do have legislation that would provide up to $63 <coughs> billion in tax breaks for one family. We have apparently enough money available to provide the Koch brothers, a family that spent some $400 million during the midterm election to help elect Republican candidates. Koch brothers, one of the wealthiest, most politically active families in America. We have enough money to provide them with up to a $39 billion tax break for their families. We can provide under this legislation a tax break of up to $27 billion and a $13.4 billion tax break to the Cox Cable family. So in other words, at a time of massive needs in this country, we don't have enough money available to protect working people and the middle class. But we certainly have more money than we know what to do with in order to give incredible tax breaks to the richest people in this country. Mr. President, the estate tax that we are going to be proposing does not give massive tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country. Quite the contrary. It says to those people that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, that instead of repealing the estate tax, we must substantially increase this tax on the multimillionaires and billionaires of this country. And in doing that, not only come up with much needed revenue to address the needs of working families, but also to reduce wealth inequality in America. And that is why this week I will be introducing legislation for an estate tax bill that would do exactly the opposite of what my Republican colleagues propose to do. And let me briefly explain what is in the legislation that I am offering. Under my bill, any time someone inherits an estate in America of 3.5 million or less, that person will not pay one penny in taxes, in estate taxes. They will get to keep that inheritance tax free, and that population includes 99.8% of the American people. So the legislation I am proposing would not raise taxes by a penny on 99.8% of the American population. But if you are in the top two-tenths of 1% of the population, that population that inherits over $3.5 million, your taxes will, in fact, be going up, and they should be going up. My legislation establishes a 45% tax on the value of an estate between $3.5 million and $10 million a 50% tax on the value of an estate between 10 million and 50 million, a 55% tax on the value of an estate in excess of 50 million, and a 77% tax on the value of an estate above $1 billion, above $1 billion. In other words, this bill begins to create a progressive tax system in America which is based on ability to pay. Mr. President, I know some may think otherwise, but the truth is this is not a radical idea. From 1941 through 1976, the top estate tax rate 
was, in fact, 77 percent on estate values above $50 million. So back to 1976, the top estate tax rate was 77 percent. This bill would also close tax loopholes that have allowed billionaire families like the Waltons to pass fortunes from one generation to the next without paying their fair share of taxes. Under this legislation, the families of all 588 billionaires in our country who have a combined net worth of over $3 trillion would pay up to $2.2 trillion in estate taxes. Now, let me make a confession here. Uh, this idea, this, this approach, uh, was not developed by Bernie Sanders. It's not a new idea. More than a century ago, a good Republican president named Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, fought for the creation of a progressive estate tax to reduce the enormous concentration of wealth that existed during the Gilded Age. And what is really quite remarkable is that what Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, talked about over 100 years ago during the Gilded Ages of the 1920s, when little children were working in factories and fields and the wealthiest people were enjoying incredible wealth and luxury, the idea that Teddy Roosevelt proposed then is as relevant today as it was, in fact, back then. And let me quote what Teddy Roosevelt said more than 100 years ago. Quote, the absence of effective state and especially national restraint upon unfair money getting has tended to create a small class of enormously wealthy and economically powerful men whose chief object is to hold and increase their power. The prime need is to change the conditions which enable these men to accumulate power. Therefore, I, Teddy Roosevelt, believe in a graduated inheritance tax on big fortunes, properly safeguarded against evasion, and increasingly rapidly, increasing rapidly in amount with the size of the estate, end quote. That is Teddy Roosevelt over 100 years ago. And what Roosevelt said then is absolutely true for today. Mr. President, from a moral, from an economic perspective, our nation will not thrive when so few people have so much wealth and power, and so many people have so little wealth and power. This wealth and income inequality is not only unjust and unfair, the truth is it is a real threat to our economy and to our democracy. We need a tax system in this country which tells the billionaire class that they, in fact, are going to have to pay their fair share of taxes so that we do not have 30 million people without health insurance so that we do not have young people graduating college fifty, a hundred thousand dollars in debt, so that we do not have an infrastructure which is crumbling, so that we do not see our great country moving toward an oligarchic form of society when a handful of families enjoy incredible wealth and power at the expense of everybody else. In my view, the fairest way to reduce wealth inequality, to invest in the middle class and working families of our country, and to preserve our democracy is to enact a progressive estate tax on the inherited wealth of multimillionaires and billionaires, and that is exactly what I will be proposing. Mr. President, thank you very much. I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.